Live from the Sky News Weather Center, this is the 10 Minute Briefing. Lovely to have your company for our 10 Minute Briefing of the final day of autumn. Rob Sharp, great to work with you now. We've got that follow up rain, which is fantastic mm. for the southwest of WA. Good for a lot of people. Yeah, it has been pretty good for quite a few people with uh, those showers and thunderstorms moving <coughs> through uh, the west. And you can see Perth collecting 5 millimetres from this. Bickley, in fact, has gained 21 millimetres from this front as it's come through. And here's the radar. Showers and thunderstorms spreading across the southwest land division. And uh, some of those falls have been reasonably heavy, yes. uh, as much as 20 millimetres. What do you say? Yeah, no, just northeast of Bunbury. Mm. Sandalwood picked up 50 millimetres. Oh, there you go. Some very heavy falls in some localised pockets, but most places seen uh, just around 5 or 10 millimetres. Now, in the east coast, we've got a severe weather warning in place at the moment, and that is for damaging surf and abnormally high tides. Uh, the waves this morning weren't all that large, but they are starting to pick up this afternoon, but the peak will be tomorrow when we see some fairly large and dangerous surf conditions. So here's the warning area on your screen, and it stretches from Ulladulla on the south coast up to Taree. And so that's where we're going to be seeing the worst of the waves and the seas. And the high tides, they could mm. be about half a metre higher than the average tide. So yeah, yeah, that is correct. And that's going to be on Friday night. So mm. the worst of that will be then in terms of the risk of coastal inundation. But for more on that in just a moment, we're going to cross now to the Bureau of Meteorology. Yes, let's do it. And Matt Marshall is standing by. Hello there, Matt. Hello. Hey Matt. Uh, so the first question is, we've got a big front in the west at the moment and it's bringing, uh, well we have a front in the west at the moment and it's bringing a little bit of follow up rain, but we've got another one on the way at the start of next week. And how does that compare to the big front that we saw last week? That's right. Uh, so we have seen one move through WA earlier today and it's still moving through as we speak. And the front we're seeing today is comparatively mild compared to the one we saw last week, uh, which had a lot of severe weather associated with it. And we're going to see another front uh, move into the coast around Tuesday morning next week. And it's looking like that one's going to be similar to the one we saw next week. That is, it's going to have severe weather associated with it. So the difference between uh, the front we're seeing today and the one we're going to see next week is that next week's front's going to have, not only will there be uh, the surface winds changing, which we'll see from as the front moves through, but there's also support from the upper atmosphere, which is going to help push the front along and bring some heavier rainfall. So not only is the front moving up from the south, there's also some uh, tropical moisture which will be dragged in from the north, and we're going to see those two systems combine and meet up along the WA coastline. So we're expecting to see weather impacts pretty much from uh, the Pilbara all the way down to uh, the southwest. And once again, we're looking at heavy rainfall, and we'll probably see some warnings for damaging or destructive winds associated with thunderstorms. Now, turning to the other side of the country, mapped along the New South Wales coast, as Rob mentioned before, we have a severe weather warning for abnormally high tides and also the, the dangerous surf. What parts of the coast are going to be affected in terms of the sea coastal regions in that flooding on Friday evening? So, you're right, at the moment where we are seeing the surf start to build up, at the moment it's mostly impacting the southern and central New South Wales coasts, and we're going to see that uh, where they start to push to the north over the next couple of days. So what's driving it is a low pressure system which is starting to deepen in the Tasman Sea. And what that's doing is pushing up a fairly vigorous southerly flow up along the coast of New South Wales. And it's that strong wind that's whipping up the sea. So the places most at risk are mostly the central New South Wales coast and in particular any part of the coastline which is south facing. So that's where you're going to have the wind blowing directly onto the coast and the swell moving directly into the coastline. Um, and as you said, we are going we, we to see some of those um, tides be above the highest astronomical tide. So that's the highest normal tide that we'd see in a year. We may see uh, the sea levels rise up to another half a metre on top of that with this system. And then over the coming days, uh, Friday into Saturday, we're going to see that high sea move north along the coastline and then weaken into the weekend as the low in the Tasman Sea also weakens. So now taking it a little bit further inland, we've got uh, a high pressure ridge now pushing across southeastern Australia. So with that, we're going to be seeing a fair bit of frost over the next few mornings. How does that compare to the previous frost events we've seen so far uh, during autumn? Well, we have seen some fairly mild frost events so far this year. There hasn't really been much too significant. Um, Victoria has just put out their first frost warning of the season for severe frost. Um, and it's looking like we're going to see those frosts possibly widespread through Victoria 
uh, central, mostly southern New South Wales and possibly into South Australia over the next few days. Uh, Friday night into Saturday morning, we also may see some in southwestern WA. And as you said, that's because that high pressure system is sort of sitting around over the land. It's clear skies, it really allows the ground to cool down overnight, and that's, what, that's how you get the frosts. Thank you so much, Matt Marshall from the Bureau of Meteorology. A lot of uh, very important information as we kick start winter for tomorrow. So uh, as expected, it's going to be very cold. Some places are going to be experiencing their coldest morning of the year. But uh, let's take a short break and we will be back with mm. some snow vision. We had some snow overnight for some parts of the country and the forecast for our very first day of the new season. Well, it's almost snowing where I am right now, just south of Canberra. And coming up, they've got the Bureau of Meteorology's long-term outlook for the winter. Doesn't look very reassuring. It's showing much drier and much warmer than normal across New South Wales, southeastern Australia. So we might be relying on east coast lows for any chance of heavy rain, anyway. Well, Rob, here it is, that snow that came through last night. How much did we get? Oh, we didn't see all that much snow. A few places picked up about 5 centimetres, maybe even 10 centimetres. But uh, in the scheme of things, it's not much of a snowfall across the uh, Victorian Alps or the New South Wales Alps. It's just a run-of-the-mill cold front, really, affecting the region. Nice vision, though. We mm. won't see too much over the next few days with that high-pressure system bringing us cold conditions. Good for snow making, but... Not mm. good for real snow, yeah, just looking. for a few days at least, <laughs> just for a few days. Now looking further ahead, the outlook for the next three months, mm. the climate outlook has come in in terms of, well, for rain and temperatures. Do you want to talk us through it? Yeah, the Bureau have updated quite substantially. So essentially the, bol the, the main gist of the fo forecast change is mm. that they've uh, realised that uh, the high pressure is going to be dominating the nation a little bit more than they've previously thought. So that means that we're going to see... Uh, more regions see a drier than usual winter, especially across southeast and inland Australia, so western New South Wales and also in uh, eastern parts of South Australia and southern Queensland are all looking like seeing a drier than usual winter. But across eastern parts of Tasmania, we could actually see a wetter than usual winter because we could see a few low pressure systems develop in the Tasman Sea, particularly the southern parts of the Tasman Sea. Now, in terms of what that means for rainfall, uh, well, that means that we're going to be seeing uh, a fair bit more rain developing uh, along that uh, southeastern corner, but the inland areas uh, we're not going to be seeing too much. So let's have a look at the temperature outlook, uh, where we're going to be seeing warmer than usual maximum temperatures across a large portion of the country, especially in that southeastern corner, where we're going to see those drier than usual conditions. And for any farmers who are hoping to see uh, good frontal systems or even uh, snow bunnies looking to see those frontal systems moving through. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to see fewer of those fronts compared to normal during the winter. That is not great news for a lot mm. of people. Yeah, so it's... we're going to see a lot more of these high-pressure systems like we've been seeing over the last month Why or Why is that? It, we, we're in a neutral pattern at the moment. We're not in La Nina or El Nino. It's mm. more of a neutral pattern. But why are the fronts going to be further down? Do we know? Yeah, so it looks like high pressure is going to be controlling the region just a little bit more. And so it's more, uh, I, would think, stronger. I would think uh, the Bureau is probably anticipating that the southern annular mode, which guides the fronts further north and south uh, away and towards Antarctica, mm -hmm. that uh, looks like it's going to drag the fronts a little bit further southward okay. and away from our country. So they'll all be slipping underneath yeah. that high. Looks like we'll have some cooler than average nights though with that high, but warmer than mm. average daytime temperatures. Yeah, but, so uh, daytime, uh, nighttime temperatures look to be closer to average. Mm -hmm. uh, a few areas will be warmer, a few colder, uh, but it's really those no daytime cloud, temperatures. No cloud, the winds, it's going to be cold. Yeah, oh yeah. But at least the air mass in the region right, will be okay. a little bit warmer than usual. So mm. we obviously know that that's just an average, mm. but there could still be a couple of really powerful fronts that bring in some heavy rain and also snow, but. Um, but on a, on a general scale for the next three yeah, months. Yeah, that is the general rule of thumb. Mm. And like you saw on the, on the screen, the in the west of the nation, uh, we're still likely to see drier than usual conditions for most areas, but we're seeing a big weather event coming through at the start of winter, bringing a fair mm. bit of rainfall. So that's just a bit of an indication of how it can swing both ways. Uh, generally speaking, drier yeah. than usual conditions, okay. especially southeast. Please feel free to send in your comments mm. um, regarding <laughs> that or anything to do with the weather. And of course, our photos 
We love seeing them on the channel. But let's have a look at the forecast for tomorrow, Rob, because it is our first day of winter. Uh, yes, and it's going to be a slightly cooler day across the southern parts of Queensland with that southerly flow continuing. But brilliant, clear, sunny skies right across Queensland. Just a slight chance of a shower or two in the far north, but in Cairns and Cooktown have a dry icon there. In New South Wales, we'll have a few showers running along the coast. Gusty winds as well, right along that coastal fringe with large seas and swell. Uh, inland areas remaining dry with a cool morning. Fairly chilly start right across Victoria. In fact, it should be the coldest morning so far this year in quite a few places, including Melbourne. And in Tasmania, generally dry conditions, another cool start statewide, uh, but daytime temps near to average. In South Australia, a cool morning, but then a fine day across the state. Uh, temperatures close to average. In Western Australia, those showers and storms will be through the east. Fine for much of the west, only a slight chance of a shower too in Geraldton. And across in the far north, we are seeing dry conditions continuing, uh, being the dry season. But the morning for Alice Springs, coldest morning of the year so far, is what we're expecting, minus one degree. A freezing start mm. to winter, literally, for Canberra, Alice Springs. Mm, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. A lot of people like the winter. Do you? Yeah, I'm not really much of a winter fan. I much no. prefer the summer months and the extra daylight that we get. So yeah, I'm looking true. forward to the end. Although some yeah. of the uh, winter forecasting is fun from a meteorologist standpoint. There you go. Well, thanks very much for watching our 10-minute briefing. Of course, we'll keep you updated right away with the mm. with the radar because it's quite spectacular with all of those uh, showers and storms coming through good follow-up rain for many of the farmers across the southwest and also the information the beach closures of course for the new south wales coast mm. so stick around mm.